Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to Aircraft Structures 1 course. This is Professor Anup Ghosh from Aerospace Engineering Department IIT Kharagpur. We are in the mid of fourth week lectures, where we will consider mainly the energy methods. Energy methods uh, preliminary de definitions and derivations are covered in the last lecture. This uh, week we will cover uh, the dummy load method and unit load method. Before we go into details uh, in the dummy load method and unit load method, uh, better we recapitulate what we have learned. We have learned history that is very important I always say always feel of solid mechanics or structural analysis or aerospace structures. Various types of external loads and conceptual structural details, flight envelope and load factor shear and moment on wing and fuselage of an aircraft, truss and space structures we have done and then we have come to the energy methods in my, our last lecture. So, we proceed. Today we will continue with that to dummy load method and unit load method. The dummy load method what we will discuss today is uh, we will take the help of the example what we we have solved for vertical deflection as it is shown on the right hand side of the slide here. This if it is asked to find out the horizontal deflection of this point A. So, how can we do? So, to do that we need to take help of the dummy load method. Say let a fictitious or dummy horizontal load, fictitious or dummy horizontal load T f be applied at A. Deflection at the direction of the fictitious or dummy load is following the previous uh, derivation, we can write that it is if it is capital delta F is a partial derivative with respect to that P f or the fictitious load and then the total energy for that in all the members that is a phi square l i divided by 2 a e that has to be taken a partial derivative with respect to the p f and it is summed up for the members 1 to k. Now, let us try to see how it changes if we talk about in a general way. So, we can say that that force whatever f i is or the member force generated in each and every member is f i and there is a contribution of two forces one is the f i p here where it, it the value is p. Because of p whatever force is coming that is f i p and because of the fictitious load whatever value is coming that is f 1 p f. So, if it is a sum, sum of those two functions, we are con considering that linear superposition is possible and then we can cal continue for the derivation. This is square L i is considered that uh, square is expanded here. If we consider the partial derivation with respect to this term, definitely this is equals to 0 and uh, this term is here written as 2 f i p f. this is constant and this, this is the derivative we are supposed to take. And in this term we have 2 f i f i 1 p f this is written equals to 0 because uh, since the load is fictitious at the end we are supposed to put a value or of p f equals to 0 and definitely this total value will become the function value will become 0 for any, any case 
and that will make the total this portion of the equation 0. The above function f i 1 p a becomes 0 while we substitute the value of dummy load as 0. So, the finally, what we have it boils down to the equation as it is shown at the top of the slide. It is it is to that is this slide, where f i p equals to the internal forces due to the external loads p 1, p 2, p n. It could be as many as possible considering general case and f i 1 p f is equals to is the rate of change of internal forces due to p f or the application of the fictitious load. Uh, we will see look at this equation in a different way uh, that will help us to solve the problem. So, let us bring back the equation what we have uh, put uh, before we go for the partial derivation. As we consider that the dummy force is also an external force considering the function f i equals to f i p f i 1 p f plus f i 1 p f partial derivative of this gives us that this is is equals to this. So, what we have we can easily replace this term with or this term with this term. Now, remains f i what to do for f i for to use this formula we need to be precautious and we have to put that while p f is put to 0 before summation. This while we are calculating the f i we need to put that those values for the p f equals to 0 and we need to calculate that. So, that actually becomes this, but this is more popular way to remember and that is the way we generally carry on with keeping in mind that we need to put p f equals to 0 before we go for the summation. So, let us solve that same problem what we have solved in our last lecture problem is easy procedure is is we better concentrate on the procedure how the procedure is how do we do this is the original problem and in this case what we are doing is that we have removed all the forces and we have put a force pf because of the pf we are supposed to find out the member forces which will become that fi give us that f i 1 p f. So, this case will give us that value. Okay. So, let us see uh, the solution is very easy we need not to we need not to do much for this. For uh, this joint we have considered here and we have considered that considering the this equilibrium of this what we can see that this S 1 is equals to P f and S 2 is equals to 0. And similar fashion if we go for the joint in this joint what we can see that from the summation of horizontal and vertical equilibrium as the process may be if we go for uh, since S 2 is equals to 0 definitely S 3 and S 4 is equals to 0. Now, if we come to this joint we have already S 1 is having a value of P f S 3 is already 0 this is equals to 0 and then S 6 and S 5 definitely S 6 will have a value of P f, but S 5 will not have any value if we consider the vertical equilibrium. So, that way what do we have? We have values for S 6, S 1. And with that uh, we, we move to the table 
that helps us to carry out the calculation. In the table what we have put, we have put those members and one, one after another this is the length of the member, this is L by A E assuming that all the members are having same A and E, uh, always A and E is divided. There may be problems where A and E are not constant, practically it is not constant, but for, for problem solving pur purpose in most of the cases this A E is a generally becomes a constant value, but A varies E sometimes in most of the cases are constant. Anyway, these are the load for the external loads, the here in this case the vertical load P. This already we have solved in our previous class. This portion we have solved today. So, please here in this please you please note that whatever is written underscore that is the subscript what is with cap is the superscript. So, uh, in that, that fashion we, the, we have the member force this way and then uh, we have the derivative of those forces partial derivative of those forces as 1 and 1 and then uh, we calculate uh, the first this portion value here it is that portion value it is nothing but multiplication of this and this, this and this and that way we have those values and this is total multiplication of with this, this is multiplied and we get those values. So, definitely since these are 0, we have only summation, summation gives that 3 P L by A E. So, delta F the deflection of point A in the horizontal direction is 3 capital delta F equals to 3 P L divided by A E and it is to the right. Why? Because the direction of the P F we assumed on the right hand side delta F has become a positive value. So, our assumption of displacement on the right was correct and it is deflecting on the right hand side. This method to find out deflection in elastic structures is known as dummy load method. Why dummy load method? Because we are applying a dummy load P F. We are applying a dummy load P f and uh, using that we are finding out the deflection. Let us move to the next slide. Okay. Before we move further for the unit load method, we have already observed that energy is required to be found out for various cases and in, in, in the next example what we will be solving using dummy load method, we need uh, these expressions. So, that is the reason in a, in a very brief way energy is for, for tension compression, bending and torsion is derived here. This is not derived definitely, uh, I would suggest you to please find out uh, how do you get that p square u for a certain member for a tension p square l by twice a e you get having a cross section a modulus of elasticity e and length l. I think a, a little effort if you put you can easily do, uh, we will see the other portions. If we look at the next one, a, a bar is a beam is bending like this, the radius of curvature is r and x axis is along the span of the beam. So, we are considering x axis in this direction and then we have a relation for the curved beam under pure bending is that 1 by r is equals to m by E i. Sometimes we get minus uh, also that depends on the, the way we consider x and the way we consider r. So, since r is uh, 1 by r is easily can be written as uh, d theta d x this e equals to the m by e i. Bending moment uh, causes rotation of the plane section, external work done 
on an element of length dx as it is shown here is equals to half m d theta the strain energy of the element dx and that is this strain energy we are going to integrate for the length. So, u is equals to half m d theta we are not putting limit because depending on the case we need to put the limit and we need to find out the total strain energy. So, that way uh, d theta is substituted from here uh, and it becomes m by e i d x and then we get the most popular form of u for bending or strain energy for bending as equals to integration of m square d x divided by twice e i. So, we have a similar expression for torsion. Let us see. In case of torsion, which is a bar of length L loaded at two ends by T, the torsion a dx length if we consider the work done uh, on element dx is equals to strain energy of the element dx, which is equals to half T d theta. And same way we, we continue d theta dx, we as we know from the torsion formula is equals to T by g j. And we integrate that substitute the d theta, this becomes half T square. 2 g j d x and um, we get the formula, uh, it is by mistake repeated. So, for the torsion the formula is this. So, with this consideration or introduction of uh, calculation of total strain energy, let us move forward for for the learning on the unit load method. That is a very beautiful method. Let us see how do we go for the unit load method. It is very, very similar to the dummy load, met load method and let us have a reference with that method to understand this. Unit load method, if instead of applying a dummy load P f, we had applied a unit load A in the horizontal direction it is we are talking about the same problem what we have solved and the internal forces in the linear elastic member due to the unit load is the partial derivative of the forces developed due to the dummy load p f. So, from observations from mathematics it is quite clear instead of applying p f dummy load of any value if we apply unit load the derivation we need not to take uh, it becomes the member forces becomes automatically the partial derivative with respect to the p f. If those forces are denoted by f i 1 for the i th member then easily we can put this value here and the delta f becomes summation of i 1 to k l i f i by a i e i multiplied by f i 1, where f i 1 is the forces developed in the members due to application of unit load <coughs> in the desired direction. So, uh, f 1 f i 1 equals internal force due to unit load only in the direction in which deflection is desired. In case of bending, a similar expression may be obtained for dummy load method. That is what uh, is written here. This del m del p f becomes this value. This is uh, nothing but how do we get that is why it has been as a reminder written. So, this, this value becomes m 1, m 1 is the is the moment developed because of the application of unit load. It sometimes uh, get confusing, please keep it in mind this statement in your mind while you are confused and we get the value. M 0 or M naught bending moment at any section due to the actual loading, M 1 bending moment at any section due to the unit loading applied in the direction of the required deflection. Similarly, in case of torsion we can have a similar 
equation T0 T1 T0 T0 or T0 is the torsional moment at any section due to actual loading T1 is the torsional moment at any section due to unit loading applied in the direction of the required deflection. So, in a, in a summation if we look at dummy load method and unit load method is that in dummy load method we are supposed to carry out the partial derivation and in a unit load method we are directly finding out the moment torsion or the member forces in case of truss or the part of the partial derivative because we are applying unit amount of load. So, let us try to solve a problem. Example unit load method find the magnitude and the direction of the movement of the joint C, joint C of the plane pin jointed frame loaded as shown. The value of the value of L by A E for each member is 1 by 20 millimeter per Newton, because we are trying to find out in dimension earlier things uh, were not in dimension. So, we did not look at it, but here uh, L by A E value is given. So, we can find out in millimeter. Length of member 1 or D C from the other dimension this and this easily we can find out square root of those and it is 2 4. 0, 0 millimeter. Now, if we consider the joint C S 1, this is uh, simply uh, considered as the summation of vertical forces equals to 0 and from there we get that S 1 is equals to since the members are all known 2 4 0 0 is also known. So, we can easily find out that cost component, this is the cost component is equals to 10 and what we get uh, that figure is not given here, it may be said something like this, this is 10 Newton, this is S 1, this is S 2. So, we are considering equilibrium summation Anyway, uh, we get this and uh, from the other component, uh, considering the horizontal direction, uh, we, we get the summation, we get that S 2 is equals to minus 13.336 Newton. Now, if we can talk about joint D or section including joint D and C. So, to do that what we have done, we have considered a section this way and that section is shown here. So, uh, either we can consider uh, to find out, uh, consider moment to find out member forces like say for S 4, we can consider moment about this point uh, or we may have horizontal and vertical uh, equilibrium because S 2 is already known. So, any, any way you may go for go and find out the values of S 4, here in this particular case S 4 is equals to 13.336 Newton and S 3 is equals to minus 10 Newton. So, um, let us proceed further. If we consider a vertical section, this is uh, nothing but a section considered from this axis, from here a section is considered. Now, uh, from the dimensions uh, we may easily find out whether the, the triangles formed particularly this triangle, uh, this triangle.
this is right angle or not this this is right angle or not may be checked from the dimension. So, that is what is done the B e this this length B e is found out as equals to 1800 mm and uh, then this is definitely a right angle. So, we can do that a b if we talk about this a b this is also a right angle. So, from there easily we can find out that this length is equals to 1350. Now, where while we have this length and this length if this matches with square of this square root of that two matches with this we can easily conclude that this is also a right angle that will help us to consider moment and uh, know the forces. So, that check is considered here 1800. So, uh, the other way it has been done uh, I think uh, you can easily check it. So, considering moment about this point this point gives us the force S 6, S 6 this is then the perpendicular distance, this, this, this distance is equal to this distance and we get that S 6 is equals to minus 16.67 Newton. This is done for the uh, load given in the vertically downward direction, but uh, the question is that uh, to find out the movement of C, it is not that ask that whether the C is moving how much it is moving downward or how much it, it is moving horizontally rightward or leftward. Uh, anyway, uh, we need to find out this, this, this much is probably sufficient to, to carry out the vertically downward movement, but let us see uh, horizontal movement we need also to find out that is the reason we apply one unit load here in this direction. In the above case, while we need to find find out the forces in the members due to unit horizontal load applied at the point C, it may be calculated that S 1, S 4 and S 3 are equals to 0 and S 2 is having value 1. And similar way if we proceed now the way we have done in the, the previous portion now from a similar section similar section as considered in the above a uh, summation of horizontal and vertical forces are equals to 0 individually will lead to the solution S 5 and S 6 S 5 for one horizontal load is equals to 0 0.6 Newton and for S 6 for one horizontal load is equals to 0 0.8 Newton. So, with that we move forward for the next slide. Uh, we have got all the values, we need to find out the deflections uh, as we have already described. Uh, following that procedure, we can easily find out the deflection. So, um, please keep it in mind that uh, these are not the values of deflection because uh, in the earlier tables L by a e was also included in the table in this particular case it is not included. So, that is the reason the vertical deflection at C becomes uh, this divided by the 20 what is given in the uh, in the question and that gives us that uh, this joint moves downward as 5.04. 7 mm and if we follow similar way the horizontal is minus of 1.335 here comes y minus how do we handle that minus. So, since it is minus we assume the load acting on the right hand side. So, the value has become minus. So, it is a coming something 1.335 it is a small value and this value is 1.335 mm and uh, the net resultant will be 
this. So, the magnitude is this that is 5.23 mm and the direction is tan inverse 14.78 with vertical. So, this is the theta indicated that is 14.78 degree. So, with that the solution ends and we let us move forward for one more example. Quickly we will try to cover this example. Uh, in this example need to be cleaned. This example is uh, associated with bending calculations. Uh, the structure is shown here. Let us read it uh, carefully. Example unit load method semicircular beam. The tubular steel post, tubular means the it is annular section. shown in the figure supports a load 250 Newton, this is the load 250 Newton at the end C, here it is supporting 250 Newton. The outside diameter of the tube is 100 mm as shown here and the wall thickness is 3 mm as shown here, neglecting the weight of the tube that means, we are supposed to neglect the self weight, find the horizontal deflection of C. The modulus of elasticity is 206 triple naught Newton per millimeter square. So, what we are supposed to do? We are supposed to find out the horizontal deflection as it is indicated here. Uh, we, we first calculate the <coughs> strain energy because of moment. So, to do that uh, with the original load existing on the structure as it is shown here, we are supposed to find out the moment at for moment in between from this to this C to B. If we consider this, this distance is nothing but this one. multiplied by r definitely. So, that multiplied by the w gives us the bending moment considering that is acting this way as it is shown here and uh, similar it, it will it, that the bending moment uh, uh, here from here to here it is since it is acting in this direction that will remain constant for the value what it achieve, achieves here that is equals to w into twice r this is twice r and that will remain constant for the length a b that is what is written that m b a will remain constant. So, let us proceed further we need uh, on in the horizontal direction. So, what we need to do for that let us see. To do that what we have done is uh, we have applied one unit load here in the horizontal direction and because of the application of the unit load, we are supposed to find out the bending moment. That bending moment because uh, we have assumed the bending moment acting this way as positive, this will act in the opposite direction and that is the reason uh, if we again consider this, this, this is nothing but the sin theta or sin theta and uh, that is what the M C B is because load is 1 that is why not, nothing else is there. And here it is uh, we are considering x from the here which is equals to x because it is acting this way it is acting in a positive direction. So, that is the reason we are considering that this is equals to x. Now, we are supposed to find out evaluate this equation that is that equation is evaluated m 1 is written here w r 1 minus cos theta, this is m 0 and d x is equals to r d theta and then 
what we have done that has that is integrated from 0 to pi 0 to pi and the remaining portion w 2 w r is the m 1 and this x is m 2 So, with this uh, we integrate and integration is not shown here in detail, uh, you can solve it as a homework and check whether you are getting this value or not. So, finally, this del delta uh, or may be written as capital delta f, uh, any way you can write. Uh, so, this and these are same, please keep a note of about it and uh, you see we can find out uh, the deflection uh, either 48.67 mm or 53.33 mm that depends on how do we assume the moment uh, area moment it may be assumed as a thin wall structure equals to pi r cube t or following the exact derivation it can be found out using this formula that makes a difference between this and this and this. Anyway, the value whatever we get is uh, reported here and with that uh, we conclude our discussion with uh, energy method related to dummy load method and unit load method and we will uh, also solve some more examples to have a clear idea about the process. So, as usual uh, the reference slides remain same and what we see is that what we have learned is the dummy load method and unit load method uh, with examples and also with derivation. And with that uh, I would like to thank you for attending this lecture and I would like to see you back in the next lecture with some more example. Thank you.